Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and there's been something that's been sitting very quietly here in the cave and it's one of these things that I just keep meaning to get to and I've never quite gotten there. Today is the day. So you can see here I have some paper in front of me. This is the Artful Mixed Media Pad. I just had it to hand and I happened to have a scrap which is where I'm going to start today because what I have is a selection of the Derivan Liquid Pencil. Now we've had some of these in subscription boxes before here in the cave but the ones that we've had have been the rewettable sort which is the variety that acts very much like watercolour so you can lift it once it's down on the paper and you can dilute it down as well. These ones are the permanent ones and I have the full selection of colours here, so there's six all together. I have got two greys, the grey three and the grey nine, as well as yellow sepia, red and blue. So these are basically liquid graphite with a little bit of a tint of colour in them. Now I really like the re-wettable ones because I'm a huge fan of the Derwent graphite tint pencils and these in liquid form play really well with both the pans for the graphite tint but also the pencils as well. I'm really curious to see how permanent they really are. So I've got this set here, I've also got the original ones, you can see mine are well used. <laughs> so what I want to do is test these out and just basically like give them a bit of a hard time, see if they're going to shift and if so how much and compare them to the rewettable varieties that, that are well known to me and are also well used. So I thought we could test that out today, see how they perform and maybe get to making a little artwork of some description with them as well. So to help me along my way today as well, I've got the giant gel palette. So called because a lovely caver called Jill <laughs> gifted this to me and uh, it's uh, giant obviously. It's not that Jill's giant, it's the palette that's giant. And I've just got a paintbrush and some water as well as some rags there to wipe my brush off on. So I want to test these out individually. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> I've dropped one already. <laughs> yeah, so let's swatch these out and see what the, the crack is with that. So these are, these are new, these are unopened and I tend to find that when you squeeze them out initially there's a bit of a separation of the, the pigment and the, the binder maybe. Uh, maybe it's just water. Yeah, that's a lot of liquid. And when you squeeze these out the tubes they do just look like graphite and the magic comes when you put a little bit of water in them. Oh, the yellow seems to be okay, that's interesting. So f from my previous experience with this, I found that the rewettable versions, if you really wanted a lot of depth and a bit of vibrancy, you had to really layer it up and not be scared of it. You know, you had to be brave with it and maybe um, not dilute it as much as you might think you need to, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Grey three. Oh yeah, God. So we'll see if the permanent ones are the same. I'm also interested in a bit of colour matching as well. Because it's got a lot of graphite in it, it can be quite unpredictable in terms of the graphite load in each, each even each brush stroke. So that's the grey nine. So there's not really much of a discernible difference here. <laughs> when I'm looking at amongst them, I've just got like a line of grey. But I say the magic happens when we get some water involved. <laughs> Here's the blue. There's a definite blue tint to that. Okay, that's encouraging. I'm just going to use a little separate brush here to mix these. Uh, this is just a little craft brush. It's a Faber-Castell one and it's quite handy for doing stuff like this. So let's start with the red because this is really separated. So if we give it a good mix, just kind of squish it back together. Now for those of you that use tube watercolour, this will be familiar to you. You know, sometimes, especially if your uh, your tubes have been sitting for a little while, the, uh, just the temperature differences and lots of other factors can make them split, but it doesn't take much to get them back together again. Okay, so I'm gonna call this my dirty rag, just to wipe off the excess here. And then I've got another rag that I'll, uh, that I'll dry my brush on. So I've just got a damp brush here. I've not loaded this up with water. I've just literally wet it enough to be not dry. <laughs> And I'm going to grab some of this and see what this does. Now that seems really thick and really concentrated. So grab a bit of water here. Now there doesn't seem to be much red pigment in that at all, which, um, yeah, slightly disappointing. And we've got the yellow. Now again, from what I remember last time, the yellow is actually more greenish. Yeah, and it's just because it's got that graphite pigment. So when you see this one next to this one, it does look this it does make this one look a bit more red. Now I think I'm gonna have to do a bit of mixing for the sepia here. 
Oh, that's lovely. Okay, that's pretty nice actually. I quite like that one. So the idea is that we'll let these dry a little bit and then just see how much we can shift them with a wet brush and see if they, you know, how permanent they mean by permanent. Because that's, um, you know, that's a phrase that's banded about and the one that springs to mind is the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils and they describe that as permanent colour once they're dry. Now you can actually shift them with great difficulty, but you can shift them, but they don't move much. You know, you wouldn't be able to lift an entire section the way you would with watercolour. So I'm just curious to see if this is going to be the same thing. And if you're into this sort of thing, if it's worthwhile having the rewettable ones and the permanent ones, or whether you can make do with just one or the other. Because I do find that the, the rewettable varieties, they are, they are very easy to shift. You know, they're very compliant in that sense. But if you're building up layers in a picture, that can be a bit of a problem because you end up disturbing the layer underneath and it can be quite difficult to build it up. I've got very noisy cows this morning I have to apologise if you can hear all sorts of noises coming from outside the cave. So this is the grey three and then next door to that we've got the grey nine which again seems to be very concentrated. So there's a marked difference between the grey three and the grey nine. I've actually got way too much pigment there. Whoa. And finally, we've got the blue, which was personally one of my favourites. Again, this probably could do with a little bit of mix. You can see it's all the graphite's all split off there. But the blue pigment is quite obvious in that, even in its raw form like this, you know, just when we've squeezed it out the tube. It's a lovely colour. Again, that, that kind of suits me. I like, a, I like a good indigo or a moody blue, so that appeals to me very much. So we'll let those dry and see what happens. Um, or even if we can get them to a damp stage and then try it out, that's probably a better idea. Um, right, so I've got the three original colours here, which is the blue, yellow and the grey nine. So I'm just going to plonk these down next to their, their permanent counterparts and see how we got on there. So that's grey nine there and the yellow. So let's grab some of the yellow. Okay, so that's a lot more concentrated. But again, see, you can't really control or predict the, the graphite load in this unless you really dilute it out. So I'm, I kind of expected that, and I, w I don't expect these to be exactly the same, but I do expect them to sort of give off the same idea in terms of colour. So this is the grey nine. And the blue. Interesting. Just lift some of that graphite a little bit. Now this looks completely different to here, completely different. So that's that's very interesting. I can see that little blue pigment trying to poke through there, but there's definitely more graphite going on here, which is actually one of the nice things about using something like this because it gives you quite an organic feel to what you're doing. You know, it's not sort of uniform. And especially if you're using them for like painting landscapes and nature scenes, that's actually a really nice aspect of it. So I think we're starting to dry here. The yellow is definitely dry. The red maybe not so much. So I've used this paintbrush deliberately. This is the Jackson's Quill brush and it's a 10 stroke zero. So this is the smallest one of these that they do. But this uh, this brush holds a lot of water and it's relatively affordable. So I thought that would be a good option. I'm not using fancy brushes. I'm just using a good quality brush that's relatively affordable. The best way to test this is obviously to scrub away at it, but also to do the thirsty brush technique, you know, the lifting technique. So you want a clean, damp brush and we want to press into the area that we've painted. And that is coming away and I'm pretty sure you can see that. So that is lifting. Now, obviously this isn't going to be 100% dry, but that is lifting. You cannot say that that is not lifting. And I've not been scrubbing at that. That's just very lightly. So that's that's um that's quite telling for a for a start. The grey three is dry as well, so let's try with that one. And yeah, that's lifting too. Okay. So permanent, hmm, I don't know. What would what I would like to do now is let these dry completely, and that includes the the rewettable ones as well. And we can test them out again and see if see if they do anything once they're bone dry and then compare them with the ones that are supposed to shift and just see how much of a difference there is between the two. I noticed that the colour of the labels of the rewettable ones are different to the original tubes that I had, which I thought was quite interesting. So I'm wondering maybe if the labels are the wrong way wrong way round on the new sets. Because if you look at the dark labels on the YouTube, that says permanent. And these ones say re rewettable, but the pale labels say rewettable on the new set. 
I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm just wondering if they're the wrong way down. So I've done this as like a test patch because this is supposed to be re-wettable from the, the new tubes, not the ones I already own, but the labels are a different colour. So I'm going to test this just as a, as a control, shall we say. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's try with the grey nine here. Oh, okay, right. That is moving, but it is very, very reluctant. I'm not getting what I was getting over here. So I think the prognosis for this is yes, it is very much permanent. There we go, I'm just going over the top. So you can see there's a bit of movement there, but that base colour that I put down isn't going anywhere. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not pressing really hard, but I am pressing. Now, if we just compare that to the rewettable format, you can see how much that's moving about. And I can actually erase my original lines there, you know, where I put it down initially. And that is moving very freely. So there is a difference between these ones and these ones. This now renders my, my control um, unnecessary, but we're going to do it anyway. So the same thing should happen here. There we go. If I'm going over the yellow, I say it's a tiny bit of movement. It's not a lot. So you would be able to build up layers with the permanent ones without too much shifting underneath. Whereas when you've got the rewettable one um, with the same sort of movement, you can see there that you can... You can shift that about all you like. It's just gonna it's just gonna play ball with you. And you could actually lift it almost clean off here. You know, go almost go back to the white of the paper. Again, that's me just using a damp brush. So uh, there is a significant difference, and I'm always skeptical of these things, but it doesn't come from a place of uh, negativity. It it comes from a place of wanting to know how far I can push my materials and my supplies when I'm actually doing a picture. So yeah, this is this is significant, this is good. So I'm just gonna try this little one down the bottom here. And okay, right, so yeah, that is that is definitely relatable. I was just wondering to see if they've got the labels mixed up. Okay, so the idea is if we want to use the permanent ones, then we need to make sure they are absolutely bone dry before we start messing about and putting another layer on. So in that respect, that's gonna take more time, especially if you are using a lot of layers you know, to create, a, you know, a maybe, a, it's, again, it's landscapes that spring to mind, you know, if you're going to put a really sort of pale set of mountains in the background, you need to make sure they are really, really dry before you start doing all your fancy stuff in the foreground. So the other thing as well is apparently you can erase this. And I, again, just, I'm really curious as to how well it erases. So I've got, I've got my, my fancy loifer eraser here. And we'll go with one of the untouched areas and we're going to try it on the permanent as well as the, the rewettable. And that is going nowhere. There's nothing coming off that at all. Nothing. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Now, what about the rewettable one? Oh. So what that's doing is it's obviously it's erasing the graphite, but it's leaving behind the pigment, you know, the blue. You'd have to do a wee bit of tidying up right enough, but I'm going I'm going fairly hard on that. You know, I'm kind of scrubbing away here. And look at that. So you can actually get lighter, cleaner colours by removing the graphite aspect with an eraser. And you're just left with the, the blue colour underneath. So that's really interesting and that's another way to incorporate a different technique into what you're doing with these. That, that for some reason that's really pleasing. I don't know why. Oh, simple things, simple things. So now, obviously, the acid test is let's layer up over some of these permanent ones. But we want to do it with the rewettable colour because we want to know that we can move the second layer of rewettable colour over the top of the permanent one. And we're going to be able to do that without it getting, you know, horribly messed up. So let's grab a little bit of the rewettable yellow. I've got some just off to the side here. This is the second time in a week I've started to film and the sun has just come out of nowhere. It doesn't make for good filming conditions. Okay, so let's go uh, Let's go over the top of the grey three here. So I've covered up a, a fair portion of that. And again, we will let that dry and then we'll go back in and try and manipulate the yellow and just see if the grey three is going to stay put. And I might do the same with the red as well, just, just for funsies. So I'll grab the blue this time. So this is the rewettable blue I'm using. 
we'll just pop that over the top there and we can leave that and see what happens. So I've left this to dry for uh, quite a considerable amount of time and I've, del I've done this deliberately because we want to have a shiggle about here and try and move this about. But also I want to see how these reactivate in the palette because these have all dried out as well. So this really is, it's just a bit of experimentation to uh, just to see what, what's what because you know that's what we do here, we like to play with art stuff. So I'm going to try and move this over the top here of the red. Now the red is the permanent colour if you remember. So you can see that the blue is moving about there and that's because that's the rewettable one. But I want to see how much it's going to shift the red. And it is lifting the red. But I'm, sc I'm scrubbing fairly hard there. So you can see I've actually taken away most of it. So in terms of actually putting layers down... I'm not really sure how relevant the permanent the permanent colour is, but you probably wouldn't be doing it to that degree, you know, if you're using the, the rewettable stuff over the top. So here's the other one here. And we can see that's moving beautifully. And it seems to be taking the grey with it. And it seems to be that it's just the graphite that's moving. Because look, that, that's more or less erased what's underneath. So I would say the reliability of the permanent stuff is debatable. There we go. If I just do that, you can see it's taken most of it away. Now, I'd wager as well if we let that dry and I used an eraser on it, you would be left with very little colour and it would just be the yellow stroke green colour that would be left. So I'm not entirely convinced about the capabilities of the permanent versus the rewettable. I think for myself I would probably use a combination of the two. I'm really not sure what to make of this because on one hand we did really well here with the permanent colour and it seems to want to stick and stay put but when we put the rewettable stuff over the top of the permanent colour it seems to lift the permanent colour. So I don't really know if you're any any further forward with this other than the fact that these are just fun to play with. So let's take a look at the palette now as well. Zoom out a wee bit so that you can see the whole of the whole palette. Wow. And uh, let's just see what happens when we stick some water. So these ones in these wells, if you remember, these were all the permanent colours. Let's see what happens when I try and stick some water in there. And that is <laughs> that is glued to the palette. Okay, so that is not reconstituting well at all. It's just coming off in sections. It's still usable, but it's not uh, it's not ideal. So you'd have to scrub away a fair amount at that to reconstitute it. It is possible, though. I mean, it's working. So there's that as well. So if you leave your palette to dry out, then at least you know that you can reuse it. Let's see what happens with the the yellow here. You can see it's it's kind of fragmenting, like the pigments fragmenting. Again, there doesn't seem to be much color coming off that. It's more graphite. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're lacking considerably. When you look at this compared to up here, which was when we used it when it was fresh, you're, you're, you seem to be picking up mostly, mostly graphite and not much in the way of pigment. Now again, that makes sense because the pigment was supposed to be permanent. It's the sepia. Yeah, again, it's like a hint of colour. Okay, so we really don't want to be letting our permanent colours dry out. Now just to compare that as well, let's do the same with the rewettable and this in theory, should go a lot better. And I can see there straight away, you can see the pigment, you know, you can see the yellowish tint there is reconstituting perfectly. And you're getting much more colour out of that. But for the purposes of being able to reconstitute, I'll actually like the rewettable stuff better. So kind of a mixed bag in terms of uh, a testing out here, but that's kind of the whole point of us doing it, is to see what the capabilities of things are. So we're going to try and paint a little picture now and just use some of these colours to the best of our ability and see if we can make something nice. So I've got a little Strathmore watercolour postcard pad here. I've had this for uh, quite some time, but I quite like the paper in this. So this is 300 GSM paper and it's acid-free watercolour paper. So what makes this special is on the back it's got the little uh, printed part so you can actually send it as a postcard which is really cute. So this is quite a good size for just testing something like this out. So I'm thinking to myself maybe some sort of um, shoreline here and a body of water. Let's 
get a wee horizon line there. And we can have some sort of maybe cloudy, moody sky. Now, again, that lends itself perfectly to the combination of the graphite with a little bit of colour in it. So my thinking is that what I would like to do is I would like to use some of the blue in the water and do what we did in the test and actually erase the graphite so that it mostly leaves pigment. I think that could be quite good fun. And that's where I'm going to start. We're not likely to be going over the top of it very much either as my other thinking. So we'll go with that. So I'm just lightening up my graphite lines a wee bit here. So I've got quite a dilute version here. And see, we'll maybe get like a sort of stony beach or something going on down the, the bottom here. And in my head, I'm thinking the sepia colour. And then up here for the sky, um, I want to use a slightly more concentrated version and really get in, you know, pick up some more of that graphite feeling because the graphite looks very, very, um, you know, very, very minimal here. I can just smooth some of that out a little bit while it's still wet. And then I can grab, grab my rag while this is wet. And we, we can still do this with the permanent colour while it's wet. Dab away at that. Get a nice sort of cloudy sky feel to it. That's perfect. And then for the ground here, we're going to grab some sepia. And again, I want to use the permanent colour for that just because it's this sort of background and I want that to move the least. And the same thing again, just while this is damp, I want to take out this corner area a little bit because I'm going to stick some shrubs in there. And next I'm going to grab a little bit of the grey nine. So this is still all permanent colour. Yeah, I'm going to try and draw in some trees here. So let's try and erase some of this here now. So we'll grab the yellow now. And I, I mean, I really do. I use the yellow more as a green uh, um, just because of the colours that the mixture of the yellow pigment and the graphite makes. And it's actually a very attractive shade of, of, of green. I like it very, very much. And just get some base foliage down here for, for trees. So with a diluted grey, I'm just going to start to stick in some, some branches and some sticks here. And now that this dries down here as well, now that this is dry down here even, I want to put a little layer of the green on top of this. The start of our shrubs here. And we can maybe start to get some grasses and reeds on the go on this side. Okay, so everything seems fairly dry here. Now it's up to us how we want to do this and how we want to build it up. And I'm going to grab the red, which it wasn't really all that red to be fair, but it's redder than plain graphite, so we'll, we'll go with it. I'd actually say it's more like a purple. Again, just the combination of the graphite and the, the pigment. I don't know if you agree with that or not, everyone. I'm going to pop a little shrub in here. I'll go back to my sepia now and start to build up some texture here as well. And the same with the sky here as well. Now if I just go straight into the grey again as well, I'm going to start to build up some more tree trunks here. And then I can jump back to this yellow colour. And we can start to add in a little bit more here. And with a bit more of the concentrated blue, we can start to add in a little bit of detail around these edges here as well. I feel like there should be another tree in here. Maybe it's set in behind this, this bush. Maybe it's quite a big tree. I'm going to add in some green in there as well. Go back to my red, aka purple. I think maybe a little bit of that in there as well. Just want to get some detail now and some contours around some of these. This beachy area. I don't even think we can call it beachy to be honest. I'll grab some of my green now and plonk it in there. A little rock out on the water there. Kind of reminds me of home a little bit. We have, uh, where I'm from, there is a rock out in the bay and it's called Ailsa Craig and all of the curling stones, as in for the sport curling, are made from rock from Ailsa Craig. And that, that's what this kind of looks like from my hometown. 
So we still do want a little bit of detail here, but not too much because it's off in the distance. Now because this is the permanent colour, technically my cloud layers underneath here should stay put and they seem to be okay and I think it's just because I'm not you know scrubbing away at them like a lunatic like I was when we actually tested them out uh, so I'm finding that that's okay the, the, the pot is underneath is staying where it's supposed to stay so that's always something let's see how dry this is um just out of curiosity here I'm going to take my razor because there I feel like there's a lot of graphite in this green area with the trees that's taken away some of it. It's just kind of softened up that top bit. Not much, it has to be said, but it has has softened up. So my yellow's starting to it's starting to dry up a little bit now, so it should be more concentrated. And I just want to put some more grasses in the actual foreground here. Maybe some poking out from behind this rock that isn't dry. I feel like this is never going to dry. <laughs> this is not drying at all. This section, my big tree here, it's just not playing ball at all. Okay, there we go. It's done a fairly good job there. Um, just for a, a quick little postcard and to show you what these can do. As I said earlier, I'm not entirely convinced about the functionality of the permanent versus the reuettable. I think if you are more of a watercolour artist and you do like to go in and do sort of all washes and, you know, lots of paint lifting, obviously the reuettable versions would be far more suitable. But I think for the likes of this, if you're just doing some simple little paintings, the permanent stuff's absolutely great. And if you get it while it's still wet, you can lift it. So you're not really missing out too much on the properties of the rewettable ones. Anyway, I would like to hear your thoughts on this. I would be very interested to find out. I really enjoy using these, not necessarily on their own like this. I like to use them in conjunction with, in particular, my graphite tint pencils. So what I'm going to do with this is, obviously, I, ha I have my original tubes, which, uh, yes, are well loved and well used. The set that I have used for this painting, I will put in the stash shop under the used items, but I also have new and unused sets of both the permanent and the rewettable colours as well. So they will be going up in the stash shop at the weekend as well. So if you head over to the website Saturday or Sunday, you will see uh, these up for sale along with a few other bits and pieces as well. So that's it for today guys, as I said I would love to hear your opinions on this liquid pencil and what you think of what happened with the permanent versus the rewettable. All comments are welcome as always down under the video. Thanks very much for watching everyone, thanks for coming hanging out. Please stay safe, take care of each other and I'll see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a great day everyone and bye bye for now.